There are two houses to rent in the entirety of Arklow this morning on daft.ie. People are protesting in their hundreds today in Arklow because the old aircom building in Arklow is being proposed, uh, has been offered to the Department of Integration for use as an accommodation centre for Ukrainian refugees or as an IPAS centre. We're not sure about the IPAS centre, but we're 100% sure it's being offered for Ukrainian refugees and uh, for use as that. Um, so people are alarmed at that for a number of reasons. The first reason is there's massive levels of homelessness in Wicklow, in Arklow, just like everywhere else in the country. And we have two houses to rent in the entirety of Arklow for a population of 14,000 people. We want the units and the space up there prioritised for accommodation for homeless people in Arklow and in Wicklow. €3,600 Euro for a, a per month for a house in some parts of Wicklow. In, in Arklow, the situation is hundreds of times worse. There are two houses to rent in the entirety of Arklow this morning on daft.ie. These kind of protests have been happening all around the country of late. Do you think that the government's policy is sustainable now? Like they, they haven't got a cap on the numbers they're inviting to Ireland as refugees and asylum seekers. What do you think about their policy? Oh, I think the policy has failed. It's been failing for a long time. Um, I think that a lot of people kind of went along uh, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of kind of unspoken and uh, unspoken intimidation really of people not to voice their concerns. But I think when they saw really the impact of the policy on the ground in terms of lack of access to services, lack of access to housing, that people finally, the penny finally dropped, people woke up, they put, they put two and two together, they said, hang on a second, hundreds of thousands of people coming into the country, increased pressure on services, it's now affecting my life. It's not just something I can be nice and say nice words about, it's actually affecting me, housing, my children, my children's education, access to health services, like I say. I think the penny finally dropped to people and there's also a sense that people feel at this stage we're taken, being taken for granted. I know independent TD Carol Nolan has said that this country put out the welcome mat and instead we're being treated like a doormat. You said that the government is treating the Irish people as though they're an embarrassment. Do you feel that these kind of protests, do you think that the government is now going to listen to the people? Have you much faith in the decision, for example, to add Algeria and Botswana to the list of safe countries? No, I don't have any, I don't have any faith in this government really at all. I think they're, they, they've, they're only making this decision because they were backed into a corner politically. I have no faith in terms of the safe, uh, the additions to the safe country list, uh, Botswana and Algeria, because I, my sense really is like that the uh, that that issue will probably be challenged by some NGO, by Irish Refugee Council. Somebody will take it. Somebody will take a legal action against that to maybe delist those countries. Um, I just think that that there's absolutely no faith. They had they had their chance. They blew it. They've treated the people with disrespect and uh, at, at this stage I think people just do not believe a word that comes out of their mouth. I'm here to fight for the Aircom building to be used for to house the homeless people of Arklow or even County Wicklow um, and not to be used to house more people when there's already a housing crisis. And you said that you had experience of homelessness yourself, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was homeless for a number of years. I moved to the UK in 2017, but prior to that for, I was homeless for about six years. Um, most of my life I was homeless down, down the quay here in Arklow. I was over the bridge, um, I was moved up to Wicklow where I was homeless on the Mara, and then in the end they moved me up to the Dublin city centre. Um, when I couldn't get nowhere out of that, I ended up moving to Liverpool. And I stayed there until two years ago when, after I'd had my kids, I came back to Ireland. I struggled to get PPS numbers for the kids. I was living off savings that I'd managed to save up. Um, I was in a refuge in Bray. Then I got moved to homeless accommodation in a B&B here in Arklow. Then I, I was in a small double room at that stage where people were complaining about the kids and stuff. Two kids and myself in a small room, I couldn't be helped. But anyway, I got moved downstairs to a family room and then I got moved to Wicklow to a family hub. So that was like a se seven apartments and I had a two bedroom apartment for myself and my kids. But my kids have been moved around so much. And where I'm originally from Arklow and I've spent most of my life out of Arklow, unfortunately, because there, no, there was nothing here for me. And would, would you have stayed in Arklow if you could have, if the services had been there for you? Yes, yes, 100%. This is why I came back from England. I had a house and everything over in England, but I came back because I wanted to be home and I wanted my kids to grow up in my hometown. And that's why it's such a shame that big building up there could be a family hub like the Dublin Simon build, building on Fitzwilliam Road in Wicklow um, and why, why they're trying to pass it off as something else is just ridiculous to me when there's so many residents and even people that don't come forward to speak that they've got trouble with their housing you know that would just be a breath of fresh air for them to be in their hometown where they have their family and friends support rather than being moved like 
one of the speakers said, or halfway across the country. I'm protesting here today to protect my town, to look after the town that I was born and reared in, and to make, keep it safe as it has been, and to continue keeping it safe. And have you seen much of you know the, the other protests around the country about iPad centres and direct provision centres? I have seen them. At the start, I, I didn't really take much interest in them. Um, because I didn't think it would come to Arklow. I didn't think we were a place that we would be housing because we have our own housing crisis here in Arklow. Um, and then I start watching it and when I start realising that the towns that were being used for it were becoming unsafe and it was just getting out of hand, I got worried for my own town that this is going to happen in my town to my grandchildren. My children are reared, but I have grandchildren coming up here. I have family here. And I want to be able to walk the streets of my town without worrying. Um, and I'm not saying that everybody that's coming into these countries are doing this, but what I've seen is there is a lot of trouble happening in the towns and that the guards are out of, they can't control it. So I have to do something for my town and that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for my town.